Good evening, everybody. Good evening. Good evening. Happy Thursday. I uh, hope you had a great day today. Today we are, that is my dog who uh, apparently thinks that he's supposed to be heard on this show too. Anyway, welcome to the Thursday Black History and Knowledge Session uh, hosted by the Erudition Network. We do this every Thursday and I thank you um, for those who will watch this later for coming on board and joining us today. Uh, you know, I, uh, this is on my nose. No. I um, am so happy right now. Um, I was sitting here a moment ago and I was thinking to myself, uh, I have been doing this for a couple of years now. Now, that may seem like, well, you should know that, Eddie. That's, that's something that you should be aware of. But um, quite frankly, um, it really just hit me, you know, that I've been doing this um, for a little while. And I'm excited to say that I am not bored with it. I believe that um, what we're doing um, and teaching our history is important. It is essential. Um, and that it is something that we definitely, um, we're reaching people. We're starting to um, get to a point where people are really, really, um, some, I'm going to say everybody, are starting on board with the idea of, learning black history and realizing how important that it is. Um, I can't, I can't even tell you um, how important that it is. Can't really express it fully how important that it actually is. Um, but it is, it's such a good thing to know. I, I, I'm completely planning um, in, in making this happen. So tonight, what are we going to cover tonight? Um, I got a couple of things in tonight, or, well, earlier today. I got some things in from yesterday uh, that were a little weird, right? Uh, I had one um, thing that popped up and said that... Uh, <laughs> I was talking about this with my sons and it was funny that black people are leper, you know, the original leprechauns are black pygmies. And I, I assume that, that, um, that, that came from St. Patrick's day. I assume that that was the, the whole <laughs> reasoning behind it, but it struck me as a little loony um, from, for multiple reasons. Um, about a year or so ago, I had um, done a, um, 
a lesson. Forgive me here for a moment. I'm seeming to have a problem with my browser. Anyway, I had done a lesson um, last July. And when I did that lesson last July, I spoke specifically about um, how things work and how things, um, how, how our African ancestors populated Europe. I spent a lot of time um, trying to uh, go into that history because I didn't want it to be confusing. I, I didn't want it to be an issue. But I noticed that, you know, there is a lot of things going on that um, seem to be a little, you know, people are lost. They're, they're, um, they're going into these ideas that don't even make any sense. And so I get it. We, we, in, at the, in a spirit of, of, uh, wanting to know, we all, um, we inquire, we, we ask questions. And so I, 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 I definitely get it, but at the same time, I don't understand why we seem to be, um, lost and, and our, under, and where we're going for, um how we got how we got here so i wanted to talk about that a little bit Okay, we're back. <laughs> I don't know what happened. Um, something happened with I, I it may be StreamYard. Uh, it doesn't seem like it was necessarily our internet, but it definitely went haywire there for a moment. So if you if you stick with us, thank you so much for sticking with us. And um I that's why it seemed like I was distracted there for a moment. Because I was like, what is going on with this internet? <laughs> it didn't even kick us out of the uh, program, per se. But it definitely kicked us out of the system. <laughs> All right. We're back with you, ladies and gentlemen. And uh, for the second try, 
Let, let's do some talking here. All right. So what I was talking about before the internet rudely cut me off was, hey, we're not leprechauns. And the 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 the, the, the um, things that have been put online, uh, the different individuals who uh, sent me that stuff, I really appreciate you. As I always tell people, please send me um, anything and everything that you have questions about. Um, and I definitely will, will, will talk about it and we'll go into the history of it. But this whole idea of leprechauns, um, and I'm trying, what I'm trying to do is bring up one of the things that I saw about it because it was, it there were actually two, but I want to bring up one. And I'm, hopefully I'll be able to play this. So uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to do this with my mic so you can hear it in real time. And I'm going to try to share it because I, I really want you to see this. So let me give me just a moment. All right. Let's put that to another page. Let's present. Let's share. All right. Hopefully everybody should everybody should be able to see this um right now. Somebody's trying to call on our on our Google. Don't know why. All right, so hopefully you all will be able to see this. Let me. Turn it up as loud as I can. Now, why am I showing this? Oh, it's my sorry. But no, yeah, please let me know. But the gist of that, the gist of that, ladies and gentlemen, we're having some a lot of technical issues tonight. But the gist of that is the fact that they wanted us to talk about the fact that the Irish are uh Irish people have black in them. Well, everybody has African in them. I obviously uh all life um on this planet as we see it right now, uh, comes from Africa. We've talked about this multiple, multiple times. Um, the issue that we have now is that um, I don't like conflation. Conflation to me is when you go and you say that um, something is thing that doesn't even make sense. Leprechauns are fictional, mythological, uh, folklore characters. They're not real. And so to you to juxtapose them and to add them together, what you do is you take away from the actual valid history of these people. You 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 mush 
you mess up, you, 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 you slush up the waters and you make it seem as if the actual history of it is, um, is not real. Or you're focusing on the wrong part of it that is not factual. Cheddar Man is a real factual part of history. It is an actual uh, um, or actual bones and, and, rem and rem remains that were found that helped archaeologists and geneticists to understand the migration of Africans into the Iberian Peninsula as they went further uh, north into Europe. But to uh, conflate that by adding in leprechauns takes away from the idea. Now, people may say, Eddie, why? Regina, am I still muffled? Am I still muffled? Why um, this is so important? Well, it's important because we have to stop with the, the misinformation and the mistruth. We have to stop telling these things that aren't real. Um, there was another thing that came to me, uh, someone sent to me and I'm trying to, uh, to, to tackle these things as they come along, ladies and gentlemen, I shared this, this picture. I think I shared it on our erudition page. I may not, I may not have, um, as I think about it, but another, um, misinformation thing that was sent out, um, and someone sent it to me was this right here. If you don't know what this is, this is the flat earth theory. This is the folks, and some of you, if you're in the audience and you're a flat earther, feel free to um, chime in, have a discussion tonight about flat earth. But there's no scientific uh, earth science reality to the flat earth theory, but yet it keeps coming up. Yet people keep talking about these false theories. And I'm personally tired of it because there is a man, you can go look him up. Uh, his name was Washington Irving. Washington Irving decided um, to put this out when he was doing the biography of uh, Columbus. Remember when we were kids, a lot of you all, and let me, let me know if you were told this. A lot of us were told that Columbus, the main reason that Columbus went to the Americas was because he wanted to prove that the earth was not flat. That's what was said. That's what was said. And so, and so this, um, this bull uh, has been put out here for decades. And the thing about it is Washington Irving created this myth. He created this lie. Now, if you know anything, anything, about orbital mechanics. And I probably have some of my, my Navy friends, I see Jamal is on here. If you know anything about orbital mechanics, if you know anything about Kepler's laws, right? Do you know that none of this makes sense? None of this makes sense. Kepler had three laws. Johannes Kepler, he was a, ger a German astronomer who took a lot of his information from the Egyptian astronomers and the African astronomers, because I've talked to you all many times before about how they track the sun because of their solar, inter solar interpolation, and they wanted to be able to understand how space worked. If your ancestors were had to leave an area because of the heat, the, the climate that was caused, and you start to realize the sun is, looks closer, there are certain things that look different, they started to study it. Well, later on, Kepler uh, came along. This is around 15, you know, between the 15 and 1600s uh, when Kepler was around. But he came up with three laws of planetary motion. 
One is the law of orbits. That means all planets move in an elliptical orbit with the sun as one focus, right? This was radical because a lot of the, the, the before that, everybody believed in the Hellenistic orbit and that everything revolved around the earth. But when Kepler came along, he said, no, understand that the sun is the center of the universe and all planets rotate around it with perturbations that pull and yank at the planets to keep them in line with their orbitology. That is the law of orbits. He also came up with something called the law of areas. That means that a line that connects a planet to the sun sweeps out equally, equal areas in equal times. So we know that they are aligned in the way that they are for, for, for a reason, perfectly ordered by God. But we, that's an argument for another time. The third law is the law of periods. That means that the square of the period of any planet is proportional to the semi-major semi axis of its orbit. Now, what does all that really mean? That means that there is a, a, apo, a, apo, a, a hard word to say, let's say, say apogee and apogee, but it's really the original words were apogee and parapogee. And basically, if I have a planet, if I have a planet here and say this globe is my sun, right? It is equally focused. It is drawn to the mass of this larger entity and it's pulling its yank is what keeps it in its perigee, right? And its apogee. And so if we understand that, we understand that this picture that I'm showing you is ludicrous. It makes absolutely no sense. It can't make sense. And it does not go along with any laws, understanding, or realities in the makeup of the universe. What am I saying tonight? I'm telling you that when you look at history, science, anything, ask questions. Ask questions. Ask questions to someone who is knowledgeable. Ask questions to somebody who knows. If you look at, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to share this because I just popped this up on one of my Kindles. If you look at um, any of this stuff, because my wife is constantly telling me, Eddie, you know, people like visual. Here you are. Here's an example of the law of areas. Now, we could get into the math, and I, I'm, I, I would ha happily... At another time, you know, I'm actually, I've ordered a, I have a whiteboard, but I ordered a stand so I can now teach off of the whiteboard. I can write. That's something that I've been wanting to do for quite a while. But this shows you exactly the, the math behind it, the thought behind it. It shows you the, uh, the, the, the issues that happen with the planets, right? They're similar to their period. It shows you the connect the connection between them, and I'm telling you at a very um, um, rudimentary level. But if you spend any time studying this, if you spend any time understanding orbitology, orbital mechanics, then you will not be confused. Now, we don't need to go too far, but I wanted to to, to discuss this today because I'm tired of hearing this i'm tired of hearing this we got to do better ask the questions that need to be asked another thing you know my sons were on the other day and they were doing um they were doing their they got a show that they do generations and i was amazed you know it was such a good show because it showed you know how they are as brothers and how they discuss things. But one of the things that I do with my children um, is I question them. I question them deeply, right? And I love to hear them when they're online and they're talking to everyone because what that does is it reemphasizes to me what they've learned. 
what they know. Hold on, I feel like I'm ignoring some of you guys' comments. Okay, thank you. I was worried earlier if I was muffled. The Earth Frisbee, yes. Looks like the, the that picture looks, I told somebody the other day, it looks like a, a, a album from a 1980s um, New Wave album. Maybe that's how they're getting that to Africa via the Greg. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yes. Washington Irvin sold a lot of books. Sold a great sold a great myth, a great folklore of about Columbus. But the truth is, Columbus had a map. Columbus knew the world was not uh flat and he knew where he was going. They told us Columbus was looking for Asia, but happened. Yeah, that was the new lie. When they realized that they could no longer say that these people uh, didn't understand uh, that the, the earth, <laughs> that the earth wasn't round. But that makes no sense because that doesn't add into the fact that the Paleolithic era, even the Paleolithic people understood that the earth was round. The best way for you to understand that the earth is round, go out there and look straight ahead. And if, if you can't, see beyond the horizon right because there's a curvature of the earth then that should tell you now if it was straight forward straight across flat guess what you'd be able to see you could zoom all the way in but because the earth is curved that doesn't happen that's the reality of science all right enough on the flat earth because that was annoying to me. <laughs> Back to the leprechauns. <laughs> I feel like I'm doing this tonight. And y'all got to forgive me that I'm laughing. But here's the thing. People really believe this. There are some who believe it. And some people who question it. But I spoke recently. Um, as of last year. And you can go back and look at the episode. Last year in July. I did an episode where I spoke specifically about how man migrated from Africa to um, Europe. And one of the things I talked about specifically was how the, the why man migrated due to weather, right? That the weather was better for those. And I told you all why. Cheddar Man, who had blue eyes, dark skin, went to the Iberian coast. If you don't know what the Iberian coast is, the Iberian coast uh, peninsula is around Italy. And they're significant because as you look at the, um, this is probably a better map to use, as you look at the actual places in Italy, let me get over here, you notice that when you get around here, it's the closest po point even closer in many ways than Greece, right? That they could be able to cross over, right? Wouldn't take much to sail, wouldn't take much to get across that water. Same thing with the Straits of Gibraltar. So when you look at the history of that and know that they migrated into the Iberian Peninsula and they did it because they could not deal with the African heat these were people who were suffering from many different maladies. Uh, one was their inability to drink the milk from the animals that the Africans had been using traditionally. Their inability to process some of the foods. Now, I'm not making this up. This has actually uh, been shown in studies. And if you go into our um, group on Facebook, um, you will find... <clears throat> and our group on Facebook, I put the actual scientific research um, that indicates um, around 8,000, 10,000 years ago um, when whites and a lot of people got, they, they, they pushed back like, what do I, I had a friend of mine who's a history teacher say, well, man, um, it, it was much, much earlier than that. No, it's not. And the way that we know that is because of the DNA because we could go back and trace and see the deficiencies and what was going on in, in the archaeological finds that they are that they that they are discovering just like with Cheddar Man. And so we know that um white started to 
these people started to change in their opinion in their appearance. There were biological reasons. They are there are natural reasons. Um, there there are many, and then there is even social sociological issues that push them away. And so we can go into that in many different ways, but that is the science and the history behind it. So as they made their way up to uh, up through Europe into areas that um that you know are in uh ireland are in uh uh uh, britain yeah the celtics all of that we know the history of that we know the history of that oops sorry so i don't want us to uh lose sight on that Me a moment here. But as we look through this, I wanted to kind of get into something else too. And I'm all over the place, ladies and gentlemen, tonight. So if you have a question or something, please throw that up in here. But I wanted to to to, to kill some of these myths, lies, mistruths, um, false histories. Um I wanted to touch on this stuff tonight. And I do that. All right. So here's another thing. We keep talking about the evolution of man. And when you get into evolution, um, that's another uh, thing that I got in our comments uh, over this past week, too. Um, people get really spun up. They get really angry. I'm not a monkey. I'm not an ape. I'm not saying you're an ape, and I'm not saying you're a monkey. What I am going to say is that a lot of this um, mistruth, ignorance, comes from a place of racism. And that many people need to understand that there are folks who had a who had a significant, um, trying to be very politically correct with this, so it does not seem that I'm saying, who basically, they had they had stake in the game to lie to you. Right? They needed to lie to you. So, again, I'm going to share my screen here, and I'm going to share with you all a window here. Um, yeah, there it is. You may have seen this in your school, if you've been going through school, where uh, Australopithecus, um, Homo erectus, uh, Homo neanderthalensis, and Homo sapiens. Now, they tell us that we are Homo sapiens, and they are correct, right? But they tell us that this Australopithecus right, Uh, came around 4 million years ago. And it looks like an ape creature, right? And they tell us that these, what they call these were hominids, right? Hominids had human attributes. They looked human. Pastor Razor, a a friend of mine, talks about these things on a biblical side in his book, his first book, Biblically Black and Blessed. And he has a chapter in here where he talks about um, man and a creature, right? Hold on, let me open this up because how can y'all see that if I got you small? He talks about man and a creature. Now, this is a significant part. This is why I enjoyed his book and I always recommend go get both of these books, Biblically Black and Blessed and Biblically Black and Blessed 2 is out now too. Get both the children of the Ethiopians. Get both of those books. They're on Amazon. They're on um, Barnes and Noble. 
Uh, you can get either one of them, and I will put links of it later on um, in the program. But here's the thing about that. We spend so much of our time um, showing the osteo uh, politicus and the homo erectus and, and, and Neanderthals and homo sapiens. And what's the point, right? The point of this is this. While people are sitting here talking about these origins, which comes from or you know, origin of species inspired in, and archaeologists wanted to give it give it a, a, a place to show us that our connection to primates. What is really not discussed so much is how are they related? We have been told for a very long time that, say, four million years ago, when Australopithecus africanus came came to be, right, that they lived and walked in various parts of Africa. They walked on two legs. They had small teeth like us, not, not, not like eight teeth. We know that certain parts of them were found in Ethiopia. Now, that is significant. Because if life starts in Ethiopia, if life starts, right, in Africa, and I, and I ask you to go read Pastor Razor's book, Henry Razor's book, then we have to understand that any life that started came out of those areas. I'll repeat that. They came out of those areas, right? So even though this is not man, this is not man. There is a reason why as we move to Homo erectus and we, we find <laughs> that Homo erectus this is what they believe, came out of, well, there was one that's not here, Homo habilis, but Homo erectus is supposedly a ancestor, a derivative of Australopithecus, right? He also, Homo erectus, walked up, right? He, they say he migrates out of Africa, and he eventually makes his way to, uh, to, to, to Asia and things like that. But they say that the Homo erectus is related to us because they have body size, human human body size. This is what is believed. Here's the thing. I'm here tonight to tell you that a lot of that is a lie. And that archaeologists, having reviewed the history of African discoveries related to evolution, they had several things that these are well-known archaeologists who documented what they what they saw. But they realized that there is evidence in Africa that suggests that human beings, even though they resemble anatomically the these things look like modern humans, they are not our ancestors or our relatives. These are creatures. These are beings that were here. Some point before modern man. That's why the Homo sapien arrived a million years later. 1.9 million years ago by scientific understanding. So if you know anything about the gap theory, if you know anything about the world on a biblical standpoint, but also on, 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 on a scientific and historical standpoint, you start to realize that just because something may seem the same doesn't mean it is the same. We're talking about skulls. But why did we lie about this? Where did this lie originate from? If we know, and archaeologists know that Australopithecus and Homo erectus if they know that the DNA does not suggest that they are they are our human ancestors, why did they tell us this for years? Why have they lied about this? And if we know, even though it's not on the screen, that Homo habilis is all a questionable um, ancestor, probably more on the ape side than ever related to us, why did they lie? 
Well, they lied because it's no one. It was never a uh, a, a benefit or a desire to say that life came from Africa. I will say this again. It was never a desire. The very definition of a hominid means that it has human attributes. In other words, it had the ability to walk upright and it had an opposable thumb or hands. Well, if that's just your way of, of connecting the tissue and the dots of, of human beings, then that's, that's, that's insane. But this is what we are taught in schools. This is what our kids are taught about history. This is how we are taught about evolution. And we don't consider that people may have lied to us. They tell us that the, that the Neanderthal and the Sapien uh, basically got together. And that is why, you know, you know, the, the Neanderthal initially went away. Makes no sense. But this is the lie. And now they furthered that lie where we have gone from Homo sapiens, right? In a large brain, a small face, and small look like us, to now they have something called a Homo sapiens sapien. a wise, more smart us. We are, they consider us to be homo sapien sapiens. And majority of the people who came up with these theories did it for racist reasons. I know we're having a lot of trouble tonight. I really apologize. I don't know why. Uh, we seem to be rapping, and we'll figure that out. But I, I thank any of you who have stuck with us today. Uh, my son just sent me a message telling me that I had cut out on YouTube. You know, whenever you start trying something um, truthful and honest and factual, you know, it's always a fight. You know, internet hasn't been, we have had no problem with our internet all day, but I, I'm constantly now seeing it, it ramping. And I, I will figure out what's going on with that. But I, again, I apologize. Um, but it doesn't take away from the message that I hope that I'm trying to give you tonight. Study, challenge yourself, ask questions. Figure out um, how things work. If it doesn't make any sense, then what I would ask that you do is to go in and find out. Um, ask the questions, come here. Go. I could always suggest to you a book or someplace to go. And um, we will do our best um, to help you to have a better understanding of what's going on. So, but, um, sorry, I was trying to check this internet and find out what was going on. All right. Uh, you guys have been quiet tonight. Is there any questions out here? Any questions? Any questions? I know we've been all over. We've had technical issues tonight. Is there anything? Any questions? Any any responses? Shoot at me. Let me know. Nothing, huh? <laughs> but um, 
All right. Guess you guys have no questions, no thoughts. Thank you, Regina. It's been a struggle today. I don't know what's going on, but I really wanted to kind of go through some of this stuff. And I guess um, because I wanted to go through it, the system decided today. <laughs> Teddy, I appreciate it. Sorry, I'm trying to. All right. Anyway, um, oh, that's nice. Thank you. No, I really greatly appreciate Pastor Ray's book because I key biblical side of it. He he gives a very good understanding um, on how this all works out. You know, very often. Um, I come across people who give me history, but they don't give me history in a relevant, uh, truthful way. And they are very, uh, they, they either try to talk around it, but when we talk about evolution, when we talk about homo sapiens uh, and, and anything that's paleolithic, when we start talking about those antediluvian, those eras, we really have to start to be honest and we have to start to try to align them with biblical fact or scientific fact also. And we would be surprised how much of, because all the Bible is, all of the, a lot of these things are, are what men saw, what was inspired, what was given to them, what they lived through. And too often we, we rely on, um, on this, Thing of modern history, modern understanding that loses us. You know, I told people recently, you know, a couple of months ago, um, we talked about the human migra migration routes. We talked about uh, how that works. Matter of fact, let me get into that. When I showed that video earlier with the men talking about how um, human beings migrated, a lot of them were so caught up in trying to juxtapose the leprechaun myth onto actual uh, pygmy tribes in history that they didn't realize that there are multiple pygmy tribes. And that's what I mean by we have to be careful of how we um, align history with theory and things that are not, I won't even say theory, with fallacy, that is absolutely not true. We know scientifically that man left Africa the first time about 80,000 years ago. 80,000 years ago. That's not Eddie making that up. That's not Eddie deciding that that's a, 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 a thing and an issue. That's science as it is starting to discover these things so that we can be smarter, wiser, more knowledgeable. But a lot of us have to learn how to stop allowing conflation and fallacy to get into our understanding. There's great history out here. It's ours. God gave it. He gave us that experience. All we got to do is go look it up. Right? When you learn and you know that as you read into these things, that people lie, right? When you understand that the whole theory of evolution lies with the idea, the reason why I brought it up tonight is that Australopithecus is a hominid, or in other words, is associated with human beings. 
But when you also know that archaeologists, scientists never, ever really found a definitive connection with that. But we're teaching it as if it is. That's why people say, I'm not a monkey. I'm not a savage. I'm not this thing. Because we are aligning species, different species together. Apes still exist. Man exists. They may look similar in many ways, but they are not the same thing. It, they are designed to be able, God created us to be able to operate and move and work in this world, in this ecosystem of this planet. And we would need our opposable thumbs, our senses, our brains. But we cannot get lost and conflation. You, you have to align them. And you have to see the real truth. You can't tell yourself that these things don't have a point, don't have a history, don't have a reason. There is archaeology out here that was denied simply because it showcased black life. And it's unfortunate, but it's the truth. When you see the alignment of how and let's get into that biblical side of it briefly before I get ready to get out of here. But let's consider that. Let's consider that you have Africa and the Middle East we're not separate things. This is a modern thing that we've done. It's a modern thing. Kush, Shiva, Egypt, the Arabian Desert, Syria, Canaan, Israel, Lebanon, Cyprus, the Assyrians, the Babylonians, the Sumerians, all of these cultures interoperated they, they they intermingled with each other they worked with each other they supported each other they traded with each other but we have it believed that egypt stood alone by itself we'd have it believed that the sudan or ethiopia as africa was called was separate but that's not true that's not true Mesopotamia, Babylonia. In the Bible, we talk about Nineveh. We talk about all of these places that are actually in the Bible, right? That are in the Bible, that connect to Africa. And yet we lie, or we accept the lie, that we're something other. Archaeologists lied for centuries with a racial bias. That's not made up. We know it. We know it. The connection of Goshen, Egypt, Canaan, Moab, Aram, Gesher, Phoenicia. When I talk to you about Tyr, I've talked a bit about this in the past, or how um, the Phoenician capital, or one of the Phoenician capitals in Tyr, the Phoenician king, helped with the with the Israelites and helped them to sail across the entire coast of Africa. But yet we don't seem to align that history and tell that history and its truth without folklore, legend, and myth. And so 
it is important. It's very important to do that. The other thing I will tell you before I get out of here tonight is oral tradition. A lot of, even though we say that we look at the Sumerians, we look at the Phoenicians, and we know that they wrote, they created language as we know it, and that the Greeks took it, the Greeks and the Romans borrowed from that language to create what we now call written word language. But here's the thing, before all of that, things were passed orally. There were oral traditions, passed down information, generation after generation after generation. There were people who were assigned to be the oral relator. People who were told they were criers. They were the ones to keep the knowledge. Priests, holy men, they kept the knowledge. And they passed that knowledge down. We know that when you look at the connection of human beings, why is it that every human being on the planet at some point in time understands how to use the bow and arrow? To create a spear. Because these things are passed down. Though it may not have been written, it was passed down. Everything is designed to pull knowledge out of Africa. When they were talking about the Fertile Crescent, where first civilization believe, is believed to have happened, they removed it out of Africa. Even though if you look, the Bible talks about things that were specifically in Africa, but it was better to move it into what we call the Middle East than to keep it in Africa. And to even talk about the fact that the continents at one point were connected. Why? Why perpetuate that lie and say everything happened in the Persian Gulf, in Mesopotamia, as you see it, and don't understand that part of it is also in Africa, or what we now call Africa. And next week, I think I will go and kind of go into that, but I, I just think that one of the things I wanted you to take from tonight, I wanted to talk about many of the issues that I, I'm constantly getting stuff in, and I appreciate it. And I don't want anybody to think that I'm saying that you should not send erudition anything. Um, and please don't take it as I'm making fun of you. I'm not. Uh, I find the leprechaun thing very hilar hilarious, but I'm not making fun of the person that sent it to me. It's a question. Historically, does it make any sense? Why are they saying this? And so I want you to continue to do that. I want us to get uh, deeper into these things. Um, I'm going to put in Pastor Razor's book in here because I think that that's a good start for you. Biblically Black and Blessed will help you. I'm also going to suggest um, if you are, because I always have a book for you. Um, I would suggest that you read a book called Forbidden Archaeology. Um, if you are one of the people who believe in the flat earth, I'd advise you to go out and get uh, any of the books out there. I think Daniel White's book is free online. Uh, it's the one I showed tonight. Um, and it will go into orbital mechanics and spacecraft, spacecraft dynamics. If that's your thing, if that's your thing and you want to learn, uh, please go out and get that book. And I will put those in the chat uh, after the program. Uh, so you have something to go through. Um I want you to learn and I want you to grow. Um, I want you to be able to, to kind of decipher these issues and um, get around these things that are going on. But I appreciate, I appreciate you, Regina. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for sticking with us. I know we had a lot of crazy stuff going on today and it may seem like everything was all over the place, but it was a lot to get to today. Thank you. Um, but I want that. Right. I really, really want us to, to start talking more about history. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I'm coming down to the last few minutes of this program. I will not go longer today. I think I did it last week. I did, but I won't do it today. Um, 
I will use these last couple of minutes to tell you, hey, the Erudition Network has three different shows on currently right now. My wife is on uh, at 5 p.m. on Mondays um, with Adroit Living, um, talking about, you know, uh, psychology and psychological health. Um, and it's a great show for you to watch um, and, and grow you, you, right, and understand how to live a more fruitful and productive life. My sons have a show on. Please encourage your young people uh, to come on and ask questions. They have a, a show on on Wednesdays at five o'clock where they talk about um, things that are relevant to their peer group and things that are relevant to how they see the world at their age. Because here's the thing. I'm, I'm older. Right. Um, I'm not. My uh, understanding is not the same understanding of a, of a 20 year old. And so they come on 19 year old. 14 year old or even a, a, an 11 or 12 year old. So um, they come on to give that perspective um, and to do that in a, in, a, in a very engaging way. Their last show was very good. I enjoyed their show talking about things. One of their old school teachers came on um, to encourage them. And I thought that was, that was really touching and really good. Um, so they really, uh, really had a good show get your kids to watch it, interact. Uh, we provide help and, and assistance. If you have children who are struggling in their history, homework, uh, it's science. Here's the thing. I want to tell people right now, if you know me, you know me. I predominantly deal with a lot of history. I get on here every Thursday and I teach black history, but I am uh, an analyst by trade. I am a, uh, I'm a thinker. I'm an autodidact. If you need some help, assistance, you want to know something to go look up and to go find, come here. Doesn't have to just be history, and I promise you, you will get an answer. But support the network, help us grow it. Um, I appreciate everybody that was on today. I appreciate everybody who will watch it later. Um, support the network. It's a lot of work that goes into um, doing some of these things, and we're trying to do more. And that makes it harder. Um, but we want people to be engaged because that gives us the push to keep it going. Um, if you want to, you can donate uh, to our cash app. That's uh, the Iridition Network. It's running at the bottom of the scroll down here. Um, any money that is uh, given goes to help out with the network, helps us buy equipment, webcams, different things that we use uh, to teach the lessons, the whiteboard and the um, um, whatever the thing that holds the white bowl board uh, was paid for by that. And so I really, really um, ask you if you want to help, please help. Anything is, anything is, is appreciated. All right. So crazy episode tonight. We got through it. Uh, also, lastly, join us Saturday. I'll be on Saturday evening. We do a wrap up on Saturday evening for the week. Uh, talking about what we talked about on all shows um, that will be on about seven o'clock Chicago time, six o'clock. Uh, Mountain Standard Time, six o'clock here where I am, seven o'clock if you're in Chicago or Central Standard Time. And we'll be on to talk about whatever we talked about for the week. And that gives you another opportunity to form questions maybe that you didn't weren't able to share tonight or questions that you weren't able to get to the live and actually talk about. And so you can do that this Saturday night. We appreciate you if you do join us. All right. Let me get out of here. Thank you again. You all have a wonderful and blessed rest of your day. And I will see you for the interactive uh, next Thursday. And if you join us for the wrap up, I will see you uh, Saturday evening. Until then, be blessed. Thank you.